Greetings Cosmos, and welcome back to A2XT2. Let's start with some species. Let's see here. Rabbit. Despite the name, this particular species is occasionally sentient and has a penchant for wearing hats. It's possible that it's only rabbits that come from magician's hats that are sentient, and those are the hats they run off with. Shadowbow. Living balls of flame that like to leap out of lava and emulate DVD screensavers. The intensity of the light they emit varies based on their mood and well-being. Healthy and happy catabos have been observed to emit light at around 100,000 candles. Armstrong. A few people train themselves to such an extent that they reach both enlightenment and physical transcendence. Unfortunately, during this train, they stay in a near-constant trance and stomp their feet, which in turn creates fire underneath them. They may not take any damage from this, but the innocents near them sure do. Submarine! Sentient nobody asked. Extreme conditions have led to the evolution of a predatory lobster-like creature that has found itself limited to staying in the lava. While younger submarines are content to subsist on other life found in such territories, those that reach old age grow to sizes that force them to hunt on the edges of lava or starve. Alright. Well, join me soon at the map. I was gonna start the map, but uh, then there's this. Email. Okay, surprise party for Kud. Just a quick reminder that we're setting up a surprise party for Kud here at the Tempura Anomaly. Make sure to send him here when his perceived date is May 5th. Okay, so that's in the future for me. Whoops, sorry about that. So I'll have to remember that. Anyway, map time. Okay, and we're on the map. Do Desert Fun by Awaken Your Mind. So the other day I was talking about my desire to make a Mario level that is extremely non-linear to the point that uh, everyone who goes into it has a different experience because of the myriad different paths and connections between paths. And someone called Babaka commented that, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with linear levels. And I agree, linear levels are extremely useful. Like, there's a reason they're the default for platformers, for example. It allows you to curate the experience of whoever plays so that, you know, anyone who plays will encounter these things in this order and should have roughly this amount of challenge. Whereas with a non-linear thing, like say, uh, I don't know, to pick a game, Elden Ring's open world, you can go out of your way to acquire ridiculously powerful equipment for say, the first boss fight. And sure, things might have been more difficult on your way to get the equipment than they might have been had you taken the... I am upset. I tried to duck and instead slid and now everything is broke. Anyway, yeah, you can just do things way out of order and trivialize the first intended boss fight. I tried to do a ducking jump, and now I'm a... Oh, that's nice. Anyway, something, something. And it occurs to me to question why I even want to do that kind of level for a Mario game. Because... You know, I need to look at the trade-offs and lean into the benefits, right? What the? Interesting. So, this implies that there's an entire sand body contained within these platforms. Anyway, something, something. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. I 
am upset at my choice of actions. I should have at least kept jumping. benefits of having a vast non-linear level won't exactly materialize in a Mario game. Benefits include such things as tactical decision-making about where to go to conserve resources. Or uh, where to try and hunt to find useful upgrades. I can't, couldn't duck there. This level's kind of annoying, actually. Like, giving a place where I kind of need to duck in order to avoid the bullet, but there is only slope, so you, I cannot duck. Oh yeah, with a uh, linear level, you can curate the experience. I already said that. But it, anyway, in a Mario game, tactical, tactical decision making, determining where to go to conserve resources, means that the game is hard enough that you're regularly taking a lot more hits than you're recovering from. And you need to choose to take one path because uh, if the game is not so hard that you can easily take multiple paths, then you may as well just cut the side paths and like the paths that aren't your main intended path and or just make them secrets that reward players for finding them. Yeah, I don't know what I meant to do there. like D&D &D, where every combat is going to consume resources it absolutely makes sense to have a non-linear experience especially if you say have a dungeon that players are going to enter into multiple times at which point you know making sure that the experience is different every time is big and important Well, at least I'm by the end. Let's just get out of here. Heck, a gate, a platform where, you know, combat is guaranteed to consume resources. Lenari Desert. And you have Lenari Desert. Why does that sound familiar? Of course, Crystal Chronicles. I've played that. I kind of want to get get into the remaster slash remake, but uh, I always forget about it. Oh, neat! Well, yeah, in a different kind of platform where consuming resources isn't just taking damage. Like, say, you have a limited number of bullets. Then, uh... 
the kind of level that I was talking about, non-linear experience, might be worthwhile because, you know, the players have to weigh... Oh, neat, I can ride these. Hey, you. I've been trying to design a new look for our armored air tanks. It needs a bit of polish, but it function, its functions work like a charm. You seem pretty harmless, so I won't aim it at you. We're also testing some new wind-powered weaponry that creates tornadoes. It won't harm you, and can even you can even ride them. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Yeah, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is an example of a game that I could have definitely benefited from some non-linear level design because you have to keep going through the same levels over and over again. So being able to experience levels differently every time would be nice. Whoa, quicksand! Yes, and this exists so I can ride over it. Oh, hey, a blard. Oh, those are just bats. Neat. So, yeah. Something, something. Unless I can find some beneficial reason to uh, make, to really lean into for making massive non-linear, well not even massive, just a non-linear experience in a, in a Mario level, I might be better off not doing that. Yes. I like this. It amuses me. Also, love the choice to use the uh, sand. I think that's a pre existing sandstorm weather effect, but I'm not totally sure, but I like seeing that. So yeah, something something platformers, something something benefits from uh, linearity more than non-linearity. Heck, even most Metroidvanias I play are linear. I have chosen poorly. Alright, so it's possible to catch up to these and, uh... Oh. That stayed up a lot longer than I expected it to. Alright, that was my fault. Hey, the sandstorm ended. Finally, I can eat my lunch without getting sand in it. Oh, hey, the sandstorm is over. That makes me sad. I liked the sandstorm. And again, I didn't have to feel it. Anyway, something, something. Linearity versus non linearity. Oh, hey, that looks like a boss from uh, Wario Land 2. Alright, and, uh, yeah, I don't want to start a boss level today. 
Join me next time when I do a boss level. I'll see you then.